Hey, hey everyone, and oh, welcome in. It's a monkey mar. I know I've been MIA, but I am back. Before we get into today's video, please subscribe, click that bell for notifications, and of course, the like. Let's get into the story. The little 10 year old missing from Davenport, Iowa, Briasia Terrell. And with that, let's get into it. So, she has made the FBI's most wanted list and they're offering a reward up to 10000 for information that assists in the finding or leading to the arrest of the individual individuals responsible for the disappearance of Briasia Terrell. Briasia Terrell, she's 10 years old at the time of her disappearance, which she still is 10. Her birthday is in December was last seen in the early hours of July 10th, 2020 in the 2700 block of 53rd Street in Davenport, Iowa. She was last seen wearing a white t-shirt, shorts, and white or pink flip-flops. So to submit a tip, if you have information, I am going to put all of that below in the description with the phone number. And then you can also submit your tips at the tips.fbi.government well, gov in the field office of Omaha. So let's get into the story. On July 15th, Davenport police named Henry Dinkins as a person of interest related to this case. Police have released pictures of his vehicle and ask anyone who has information about his whereabouts contact a Davenport police. And the white van that Dinkins has I mean he might as well put on there free candy on the side like he's a sexual predator convicted and he is driving around a white creepy like little motorhome and you'll see the pictures above so they want to know if anyone knew where his whereabouts were around the time that she went missing. So according to the police, Dinkins is known to have previous connections to the Comanche and Clinton areas. Vehicles associated with Dinkins include a 2007 maroon Chevy Impala, a 2012 black Chevy Camaro, and a 1980s Kings Highway motorhome. Creepy! All of these vehicles are currently being impounded and in possession of investigators. Sikorsky said, Dinkin remains in custody on a sex offender registry violation. A Class D felony he was arrested on July 10th on the registration violation charges hours after Terrell was reportedly last seen. Dinkins has not been arrested or charged in Terrell's case, but police said he may have information that could assist the investigation or possess certain characteristics that merit further attention by investigators. We are asking the public's assistance for any information regarding Dinkins and the associated vehicles during the time frame of Thursday, July 9th from 10 p.m. to Friday, July 10th at 12 p.m noon he said we are requesting any information the public may have on dinkins whereabouts in the quad cities area during that time frame as investigators have continued their search for terrell over the past two weeks businesses and volunteers have offered resources and assistance terrell's mother Aisha lankford told tv6 around 9 13 p.m on Thursday, July 9th, Briasia texted, Good night, Mommy. I love you. And I had texted her back and I told her, Good night. I love you too. Langford said. During a search on July 11th, Langford told TV6, I'm so blessed to have such an amazing community, especially with everything going on right now. There have been no arrests or charges announced in the disappearance of Terrell. Anyone with information on the case is asked to call the Davenport Police Department, and I'll drop that number as well in the description. A missing person advisory issued by the FBI said, if you have any information concerning this individual, please contact your local FBI office or the nearest American embassy or consulate. You may also contact the Davenport Police Department and, of course, like, 
The third time's a charm. I will drop all of this information below in the description. Tips can be submitted at tips.fbi.gov. So, you know, it just amazes me how many people go missing every day and how only some of them make the news or even a headline. But let's get into Dinkins. Let's go get nosy and see if we can't find out some information on this one. So the mother, Aisha Langford, of missing 10-year-old Briasia also believes her daughter is being held against her will. Oh, this gets better. And suspects her half-brother's father holds clues to where that may be. So this is the stepfather to Briasia or they never got married and they have a little brother. She has a little brother that he happens to be the father of and they share their mom. So Aisha told NBC's Dateline Tuesday she's not giving up hope that her daughter Briasia Terrell, who was last seen on July 10th while staying at a Davenport apartment of her half-brothers a father, Henry Dinkins, will be found alive. She's out there somewhere, and when she's home safe, that's when the story begins, Linkford told Dateline. But we just have to find her. That's what we are focused on now. Langford said Briasia spent the night of July 9th at Dinkins' apartment with him and her son, Briasia's eight-year-old half-brother, as well as Dinkins' a girlfriend. The girl, also known as Bree, texted Langford, her mom, before bed to let her know she was okay. The distraught mom said, and that's the last time I heard from her, Langford said. Dinkins, who has since been labeled a person of interest in the case, was a convicted of a sex crime in 1990 when he was 17. So, of course, I went to dig on him a little bit deeper, and I'm sorry. If I was a parent to a 10-year-old child and knew his background, she would not be staying at his house. After a search warrant was executed at his home on the day of Briasia was reported missing, Dinkins was charged with a second offense, sex offender registration violation, and a probation violation, a criminal complaint show. Langford said he spoke to Dinkins. She spoke to Dinkins and last week while he was in custody at Scott County Jail where he remains in custody. He broke down after only a few minutes, Langford said. I've known him for 11 years, and I've never seen him show that kind of emotion. I know he knows something. Langford said she told Dinkins he would have a good night's sleep. He wouldn't, excuse me, have a good night's sleep in jail until her daughter is back home. Davenport Police Chief Paul Sarkorski on Monday called off organized searches for Briasia, saying the department's resources would instead be focused on pursuing leads that have been developed in her disappearance. We all want to find her alive, Sikorsky said. That is what our intent is as we continue the investigation. So let's jump over and look at this guy's um, criminal background report and it's so long that I will scroll through it and talk about a few and mention a few but you guys can pause it and look if you want but it is a, a long one all right let's get into that report and then let's take a ride by the area she went missing and we will call it a day on this you know me I'm very nosy and I was curious to know what charge Henry Earl Dinkins actually committed with the um, sexual charge that he has against him from 1990 when he was 17. So I decided to look on the Iowa Registry for Sexual Offenders. And um, his conviction was on 8-23-1990 in Scott County. He was 17 and the victim was 0 to 13 years old and she was a female so that is what he is in jail for for not regist 
registering as a sex offender. So let's go and um, look at his report for his um, whew, his criminal history. And like I said, it's so long it would probably take me hours to even say them. So I am basically just going to scroll through them and you guys can slow it down and look if you would like. Okay, so here is Henry Earl Dinkins criminal background on one of the nosy sites that I go on to. So like I said, I am just going to scroll through them and touch on a few that pop out. Like, it's he's a thief, the drugs, the paraphernalia. Um, he's got a couple of domestic violence charges. So I just don't understand, and nothing against Briasia's mother, but if you know that he is all of this and a sexual offender why and he's not the father of your of your girl why are we sending her over to his house to spend the night I mean I just do not understand so we've got here in 2001 endanger life and health child domestic battery bodily harm so that can't be the same case from 1990 to go 11 years later. And then we've got, I mean, just, it just goes and goes and goes. Theft, not specified. Interference with official acts. Um, offense, not specified. Possession of a controlled substance. Contempt, illegal resistance, possession, violation of probation, and fugitive from justice, driving while barred, habitual offender, interference with official acts, possession of drug paraphernalia, violation of probation, harass public officer, DNU, Harassment public officer. Sex offender registry failure. Second offense. Like he is an habitual, habitual offender too across the board. I mean, and when the mom went to the jail to see Henry Earl Dinkins, Asia, I mean, what, she just didn't come home with the son where is your son like what is the story what is he saying how does one child come home and not the other with a background like this ah, i pray they find a little briasia terrell okay and maybe he has her somewhere or maybe he has nothing to do with, with it at all but I'm going to have to say my spidey sense is telling me, like, what is this? 2009. Murder first degree he has. A murder in the first degree. And then we have murder first degree, intimidation with dangerous weapon, injure, provoke, fear. What in the entire F are you doing letting your child who is not even related to this man be around him why would you even want him around any of your children so let me just get through this um, long rap sheet let's take a drive by the area where she went missing criminal trespassing and proper registration and this is not even including his um his driving history like we're not even going to get into that so in 2004 he was ordered to the sex offender registry and then we've got Domestic battery with bodily harm in 2000. Second offense to register. 
So some of these cases are duplicate, but you get the basic idea of um, what is and what's not. But he's definitely had some issues his entire life. So let's take a ride by and let's go on a little road trip and then we can go ahead and um, wrap it up. So this is where Henry Earl Dickens lives. I'm assuming after looking him up, he happens to live in a lot of apartments, but I do not have him at this address, but they said she went missing from 53rd Street, the 2700 block, and in this block are these apartments. So I am guessing that she was spending the night here. And I'll tell you, I'm, I'm so close to going and looking into the mother just to find out what she's about, but I am going to respect the fact that her daughter is missing and she might not have made the best choices in her life with who she has her children with, but you know, like I said, everything is speculation, but I'm sure the police do know a lot more, of course, than what they're saying. And I do hope that she is found alive. And unfortunately, we can't get back into the apartments, but it is a big complex, and it is called a Jersey Meadows. So let's pop into the aerial view, because there's not houses on this block. And from his hit rental history, he seems to be an apartment dweller. So, let's get this aerial view because this is the whole entire complex. And it's all the way through here. 2700 East 53rd Street. Alright guys, with that, it is going to be a wrap. I want to thank you all for coming in. Thank you for watching. Please like or dislike whichever you prefer. Let's share to spread the word. And everyone stay safe from COVID and stay vigilant. And I am back regular, so look out for my future videos. And with that, guys, I am out.